actually have a mask if anyone needs one. So feel free to mask up if you want to, just like I said, the good old days. Don, I see you're online. If you would, could you please call the roll, please? Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson. I am here. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mayor Carlson. Here. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mr. Ebbinger. Here. Mr. Strand. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Grimberg. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Selzvold. A quorum is present, and I know Mr. Selzvold is trying to get on. I just forwarded the invite again. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Don. Uh, and as we have a new member who I'm sure most of you don't know, uh, his name, I believe, is Anthony Grinberg. Grinberg. Uh, welcome, Commissioner Grinberg, back to the Diversion Authority, although you sit in a similar seat virtually. Uh, I think you're familiar with the project, and that's why the County Commission elected to put him back on this board. His, his knowledge long term of this is going to be invaluable to us, whether it's here on finance in our with our friends in the legislative session i'm i'm glad we have him and I'm, I'm blessed to have him on this board so welcome commissioner grinberg thank you chair peterson i'm glad to be back wonderful and out of respect to our our uh minutes keeper our secretary when you make a motion or a second could you please give your name that makes it a little bit easier for everybody so just i think we all know the drill by now like i said we had two years of rehearsals so away we go uh, with that, we have calls to order, and now we have approval of meeting minutes from November 17th. Look for a motion to approve or discuss, please. Move to approve. Yep, or make the motion. Or second. Sure, and second. Perfect. We have a myriad of options to pick from, Don. Feel free to uh, elect the person you see fit to put in the record. With that, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item three in our agenda is the approval of the order of the agenda. Don, I don't see any amendments, so I'm going with what I've got in front of me. I should be safe, correct, Don? That is correct. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, you have before you the consent agenda and a chance I hope you had to review it prior uh, within your meeting packet. If so, look for a motion to approve, amend, discuss. Mr. Chairman, John Strand moves approval. Thank you, sir. Is there a second, please? Olson seconds. Wonderful. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second on the table to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, Don, roll call vote, please. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Ebbinger. Aye. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Grenberg. Aye. Mr. Olson. Yes. Mr. Seljevold if he's been able to join us yet. That is everyone. Thank you much for that. On to our regular agenda. Item four, executive director report. Mr. Paulson, I see you here. I am here, Mr. Chair. Wonderful. Uh, you have the comp, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your flexibility. Uh, and thank you, board members, for uh, for being able to make it here virtually. Uh, it is important that we keep these meetings on a monthly basis. Uh, obviously, um, you know, we have numerous bills. I think we're around 5 million this year, and those are required uh, for approval on a monthly basis with the board members. So uh, it is important that we get together, but I also wanted to share some uh, some recent news about the program over the course of the last month. Um, I just want to make note that uh, Mr. Shockley and I um, did attend the government P3 conference. And while we were in uh, Washington, DC, 
we had meetings with our uh, legislative delegations and uh, Ms. Jody Smith did it did come with us for those meetings. Uh, they were really focused on crop insurance and uh, some crop insurance uh, legislation that uh, we may be looking at uh, um, um, changing or or having some help uh, as we move towards the farm bill uh, late next year. Uh, so expect some more information there, but we uh, we wanted to make sure that um, while we were there, we, we checked in and uh, you can see a few photos there of uh, the meeting with Senator Hoven and the meeting with Congressman Armstrong. Uh, all in all, a uh, great reception uh, and able to share some some updates about the program as well. Uh, subsequently, uh, the week after uh, we were awarded the bond buyer deal of the year awards. Uh, it was actually two awards, uh, one smaller one, a public private partnership deal of the year. And then we competed with uh, nine other projects around the country um, and uh, we won the, the large award, which was the public private or which was the public deal of the year. Um, and really the bond buyer is uh, is only focused on municipal bond transactions. Um, so I, I, I think the, the board can be proud of uh, of winning deal of the year and and uh, what I believe was probably the, the best municipal um, financing transaction um, that occurred in 2021. Um, so very high honor there. Uh, and then I did present at the North Dakota Water uh, Annual Convention, uh, gave an update uh, to the, the water users and, and those interested in water in North Dakota on the project, uh, along with uh, um, other large projects around the state. Um, so kind of got to see where, where the status of, of those projects as well. And, and then obviously a lot of discussions concerning the upcoming North Dakota legislative session. Um, a lot of interest in what our priorities are. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily have any specific priorities, but we're certainly uh, going to be available to, uh, to have discussions and, and update new legislators about the project. Um, and then also, um, you know, take part in any sort of discussions related to uh, um, maybe law changes that might impact our project. Um, move on to the next page here, Paul. I did want to provide just a, a quick summary of where we're at on construction because that does continue now, even in the winter months. Um, you can see here, this is this was a photo from before the snow, but uh, we do have a video to show the, the board members um, that'll give you a little bit a better flavor of what construction looks like in December in North Dakota. But, Currently, there's 110 pieces of machinery operating in the uh, the channel excavation, uh, 58 vehicles and 105 employees that are working on three shifts around the clock. Um, I, I did get word incidentally that actually today they have suspended uh, construction activities and uh, probably rightfully so, um, considering the operators would um, probably not be able to see very well. Um, but uh, they are working around the clock when there isn't uh, significant weather events like this. Overall, um, you can see we uh, were about 1% done with the excavation. Um, however, um, you know, when this slide was put together, I think uh, over the course of the last few weeks, I did get word that we're somewhere around 2 million cubic yards of material that has been excavated out of a total of about 45 million cubic yards. Um, so they are making uh, some pretty significant progress um, overall, even though it maybe uh, might look like just a small percentage of the overall channel uh, project being constructed. Uh, incidentally, I did um, have a, a discussion with uh, uh, Jason Benson, uh, Cass County Highway Department, and he, uh, he mentioned that uh, 2 million cubic yards would be the equivalent of about a two foot excavation on one section of land. So a mile by one mile. So uh, just for a visual, I, I thought that was a, a great way to visualize the amount of excavation that's occurred to date. Move to the next slide, please, Paul. And then of course, uh, we continue to have channel utility line relocates in anticipation for the um, for the uh, excavation of the channel. So, so far we have five of the 17 utility company relocations underway and a majority of those are, are board um, utility line replacements, as you can see here. Next slide, Paul. Diversion inlet structure is really shaping up and coming together well. We do have Terry Williams on the line, so I, I won't get into too much detail here, but 
um, we are uh, tracking at about a 92% completion on the uh, on the DIS structure. The wild rice structure continues to amaze me. Um, if we remember, this one started a few years after the DIS, but it's quickly catching up as far as uh, the completion amount completed. Uh, currently, we're tracking about 75% complete. Uh, this this photo is actually out of date, um, and you'll see a, a more updated uh, photo during the video preview. And the Red River structure, uh, you'll also see this in the video. Um, a lot of the excavation work is complete, and, and they're certainly driving a lot of steel into the ground for H piles um, and, and uh, preparing for some of the first concrete pours out there. And that's about 7% complete. Uh, here's Southern Embankment Reach 1. Um, this is will be turned over uh, shortly to the authority, um, so the project is uh, is pretty much complete. Uh, it will be the first component of the federal work that uh, that we take over um, operation and maintenance on. And the I-29 grade raise has suspended for the winter, um, but here you can see we're we're certainly move, making progress and the, the project remains on schedule and we're tracking about 70% complete. And just a quick update on local flood protection. Uh, here you can see Fargo and Moorhead in particular uh, continue to work on lift stations, property acquisitions, and, uh, and a few more uh, miles of uh, road improvements, grade raises, and levees and flood walls. Um, Cass County and Clay County do have work to do. Um, uh, most of that is grade raises, um, and you can see most of that has been strategically placed to the end of the project uh, construction period, um, but we see Cass County making a, a slight amount of progress there. And I do want to make a note uh, about our mitigation projects. Uh, we're about 100% complete on the Drain 27 wetland project. Uh, so that will be uh, turned over to the authority uh, next spring, I believe. Uh, Terry can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, once the permanent plantings are all complete, and that will be uh, the next component that the, that the authority will take over uh, for operation and maintenance. Next slide, please. And the Drayton Dam continues as well um, up, up near Drayton. Uh, so uh, it addresses water supply issues for Drayton and Grafton and uh, also uh, meets some of our environmental mitigation requirements under NEPA, uh, providing fish, fish passage uh, on the red from the Canadian border up to uh, uh, Wapit and Breckenridge, I believe, or Fargo, I think is, is uh, kind of the, uh, the length of the river that is now open for, for unobstructed fish passage. Uh, we do expect that dam to be breached uh, early next year as well, um, and the, the rock rapids will then begin to uh, um, allow that fish passage. And uh, here's a comprehensive a list of all of the awards that the project won this year. It was a banner year. Um, you know, I think most of these kind of reinforce the uh, the the work that the legislative work federally that was done um, with Senator Hogan and Senator, Senator Klobuchar kind of paving the way for the Corps of Engineers to engage in this new concept of a public-private partnership. So um, it, it's not surprising to me that uh, we, we've been recognized uh, by all of these uh, different entities as, uh, as we ab absolutely have a groundbreaking project. And I believe that is all I have for you, Mr. Chair. Certainly open for any questions. Wonderful, Mr. Paulson. Any question from our team? Feel free to, I have a screen open too, so feel free to raise your hand if we get in the line of people. Any questions or discussion? Any questions or discussion? All right, Mr. Paulson, nothing more to add, yeah? Uh, no, that's all, sir. Thank you. Standing. Thank you. Uh, General Counsel update, Mr. Shockley. I haven't seen if you're on. You are on. I am on, uh, Mr. Chair. I do not have any updates. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Shockley as long as he's here from our team? Any questions? Wonderful. All right. We'll push on. Uh, on to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers update. Terry, you are there. Okay. 
I'm here. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to express Colonel Swenson's regret that he's not there uh, to meet you today and, and speak with you today, and then also to tour the construction. He was going to tour the diversion channel construction um, tomorrow morning, but the weather weather just didn't allow the travel and he really um, prioritizes getting up there very soon and meeting with the board in person. Um, on to the update, you have a copy of this in your packet. I won't recover what, what Joel has covered already. Um, for the diversion inlet structure, Ames did hang the arms for the center gate a couple days ago, even in this um, questionable weather. They, they had to take a bit of a break, but their plan is to have all three gates hung by Christmas and they will be working weekends to get it done. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, the wild rice structure, the, the drone footage is, is really great showing what's going on out there. It's uh, on schedule. And as you know, the, the structure itself is being constructed off channel in the dry. And um, Ames has been working on excavating the engineered channel that goes through the structure. And then it's actually the new river and they plan to reroute the wild rice river through the structure, probably in March. Um, they'll start removing the plugs in that uh, engineered channel and we'll start seeing water actually go through that structure. And a bunch of us are looking forward to witnessing that. Uh, I'll just jump down to the Red River structure. Um, the drone footage covers this. Uh, Ames is, has taken their, their winter break a little early given the weather, but they do plan to get back, I think at the beginning of the calendar year to continue driving pile and prepare for some huge concrete pours. They wanna have, I think all of the concrete in place uh, in 2023 for that structure. For drain 27 wetland mitigation, Joel mentioned us turning that over to the sponsors shortly for O&M. Um, it'll probably occur prior to spring. It'll be a partial turnover. We still have the native plantings to do, and so the entire thing won't be turned over. It'll just be um, the weir portion of this project. Um, I'll just move on to SC2A. That's on winter shutdown as well. That's pure levee construction and that can't happen in freezing temperatures. So there's not a lot going on out there. Uh, number nine, design work. The, the big thing here, I believe, is that we've identified all of the real estate needs for the Southern Embankment now with the exception of SE4. And that's, that's the reach in Minnesota that starts at the red and goes down um, basically almost over to the Comstock area. Um, and that will be to the sponsors by the end of January. That's been a big push to identify the rest of the real estate needs for the Southern Embankment so it can be acquired. Um, with that, are there any questions? Any questions for the Army Corps? Any questions at all? Well, Terry, you can let command and control say they really missed out an opportunity to experience the North Dakota Minnesota winter. You know, they're always welcome 24 yeah. hours a day, every day. So, absolutely. This is what makes us hardy. Hardy North Dakotans and Minnesotans. Okay, no questions for our friends at the Army Corps? I'm not seeing any hands up. So, all right, Ms. Williams, thank you for your time today. We will push on communications update. Their comms team on. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. We will start with the drone video so you get a good overview of what Ms. Williams was just speaking to. Hi, I'm Tom Fuchs, the MFDA's Senior Construction Manager with a progress update on the FM Area Diversion Project. South of Fargo Moorhead at the Wild Race River structure, the second of two gates is now in place and concrete girders have arrived for installation at the bridges spanning above. Work continues to progress across the project site with the gauge well structure and riprap placement underway on the upstream side of the structure and engineered channel excavation is continuing on the downstream side. More than three quarters of the work on the wild rice structure is now complete. 
Nearby at the Red River structure, piling continues to be driven to help anchor the 75 foot tall structure. Crews also began placing concrete for stabilization slabs beneath the structure's stilling basin on the downstream side. Stabilization slabs will protect the subgrade soils from weakening due to ongoing construction traffic and will provide a solid platform for installing the stilling basin's concrete formwork and rebar, which will be placed in the coming months. About 400 tons of rebar will be installed within the Stilling Basin Foundation, a portion of nearly 3,000 tons that will be installed for the entire control structure. Nearby where work is being done to raise a 4.2 mile stretch of Interstate 29, you'll notice that the bridge girders went up on the northbound Borrow Ditch Bridge. The I-29 project will need to slow through the winter months and ramp up in the spring. North of the metro area, ASN Constructors is continuing to excavate the channel and build up the embankment. As the channel excavation grows, the excavated material berms will rise to nearly 20 feet on both sides. Crews have now surpassed 1.8 million cubic yards of material excavated to date on the project. A team of 100 employees is working around the clock with an array of 60 pieces of new equipment to make progress on the 30 mile long stormwater diversion channel which will be completed by 2027. Get more behind the scenes looks at the people making history with this project by signing up for the Diversion Current monthly newsletter at fmdiversion.gov. C3 always does a great job capturing footage and I wanted to call out especially the, the channel construction footage. Tom was able to give them a heads up about that temperature difference with the ground steaming as it got cold and they took off and got out there and got that footage and it really turned out nice and uh, it's a good way to see what construction is like for a lot of people in this time of year in North Dakota. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please, Peggy, I can give a quick overview of where we're at with the diversion current. So you'll see the industry averages are the horizontal lines and our statistics are the vertical lines. So for opens and clicks, we want to be above those lines and we are well above them, um, especially these past couple of months. And then we want to stay below that line for bounces and uns unsubscribes. And we are doing that as well. So performance is going going very well with that newsletter. Um, we also released uh, our next basis of the diversion video, which you may have seen with Sarah Edmondson, the HR director for ASN Constructors. And we have two others that have been filmed during production. So we will continue to release those on a monthly basis and, and have a list of others that would be um, good additions that we will interview yet. Uh, in terms of public relations, we sent out two press releases, one to be able to educate a little bit more on the flowage easements and what's being done there, and then on the bond buyer awards that Joel spoke to. If you'll move to the next slide, Peggy, yep, I wanted to give you just a quick breakdown uh, 2022 by the numbers. So there were 19 presentations made to conferences or groups that we tracked a half dozen formal site tours, probably some other less formal ones that took place, I'm sure, and 13 different awards, national and international, that the project was recognized with this year alone. Uh, from a PR standpoint, we sent out a dozen different releases, helped with the groundbreaking in a press conference um, that was back in January, and logged um, close to 200 news stories and project mentions that, uh, that came out this year. And then taking a look at our social media sites with a year over year comparison, uh, the stats are looking very good. Our reach on Facebook is up almost 600% compared to last year, 400% uh, up on people visiting our page and those liking the page has gone up close to 200%. Over on YouTube, views went up 138%, so we had um, more than 18,000 views this year. Uh, watch time also increased, uh, and then the subscribers grew by 84 to 224 total, so that was a really big jump this year as well. Over on Twitter, our impressions tripled this year compared to last year to 24,000, and uh, LinkedIn, has been performing very well. Page views increased by more than 2,800%, and our unique visitors increased by nearly 2,000%. 
Uh, so taking a look at the numbers, I think we're definitely on the right track as we head into 2023. Um, I'm happy to take any questions you have on any of this or anything else communications related. All right, any questions for our communications team? Any questions for our communications team at all? All right, well, thank you much for that. Appreciate your time and well done. Uh, on to land management, item eight, uh, Ms. Smith. Yes, good afternoon, Chairman and members of the board. On this first slide, you'll see um, there were 17 acquisitions um, that we were able to close since the last month. Peggy, if you go to the next slide, I'll spend a little bit more time focusing on this. Uh, the 91.1% complete didn't really change uh, from what we would consider just a couple weeks ago, but we did have a half a percent increase in the UMA footprint. On the next slide, then, you can see um, us breaking it down to the different areas within uh, within the land strategy. So the Southern Embankment and Associated Infrastructure did not change from last month. Um, the upstream mitigation area did increase as it previously discussed and everything else remained the same. And then on the final slide, just covering some of our key activities, which I think is the most important. We do continue to negotiate settlement agreements for existing um, eminent domain actions. Uh, we did reach uh, agreement with three additional property owners this past month. This morning, the Cass County Joint Water Resource District did approve one additional settlement um, with a property owner covering three parcels. We have received the final right-of-way drawings and the notice to proceed letters from the core on SE3 and SE5. Uh, this is important because if you look at the previous slide, you'll notice that we're not making much progress on the Southern Embankment. That is because primarily we were waiting on SE3, 4, and 5 drawings to come to us. With the SE3 and 5 coming to us, we have submitted the task orders to receive the necessary appraisals. Once those are completed, we'll begin working with the property owners for the necessary property rights. On the next bullet, you'll see that the deadline for batch one with our last written offers on the flow agements uh, did pass and we did file eminent domain on an additional eight property owners. All of those property owners are located in North Dakota, by the way. In batch two then, um, we had 16 property owners covering 26 parcels. Those did go out the door um, and we're waiting to hear back. If we do not have a negotiated settlement, um, our legal team is prepared to file eminent domain on January 3rd. Then in batch three, the Cass County Joint Water Resource District did approve us sending last written offers to 32 property owners. Um, again, the, the, the final date for them to be able to negotiate a settlement is at the end of January and eminent domain will be filed on January 27th if we're not able to uh, get to that settlement. I can say that this morning, you know, again, the board approved the one uh, negotiated settlement on an existing eminent domain action that's been in place for a couple years now. They were also able to approve 11 flowage easements. Uh, several of those flowage easements are from property owners who are in batch one and two. And so we do feel like the last written offer strategy is working as we go forward and we, we hope to continue to negotiate with the property owners. Are there any questions that I can answer? Any questions for Ms. Smith? Any questions? I'm not seeing any hands up. All right, Ms. Smith, anything further to add? No, nope, thank you. Awesome, Merry wonderful Christmas. Thank you for your time and your team's work. Uh, item nine on our agenda uh, is finance update. Uh, Mayor Dardis, please. Thank you, Chairman Peterson. Uh, finance committee met yesterday virtually as well. Uh, we had uh, Ms. Gayhart presented to us the December bills for the total of $5,740,505. And also she reported out that our net cash position at present is 138,521,623. Uh, Mr. Paulson obviously uh, presented a number of his uh, uh, contracting actions, which were all approved. Uh, I would also, uh, to the point that uh, 
Chairman Peterson made about uh, Tony Grinberg coming back to the Diversion Authority. We're excited at the fact that uh, he probably will be placed on the Finance Committee, which is exciting news for, for all of us. And also, I would like to acknowledge that we had a Finance Committee member that uh, celebrated his retirement today and Mr. Dan Jacobson. And uh, I was out at his reception today and wished him well, and they're going to fly to Coral uh, Gables tomorrow if they can get out of here. So uh, again, wanted to acknowledge that that uh, Mr. Jacobson had served our finance committee very well. Um, let's see. The only other thing is, is that, and I would assume that uh, be the next order of business is the cash budget was discussed for 2023. And uh, uh, the, we've had uh, uh, three draft budgets, and at the present time, uh, the committee did approve uh, the cash budget for the, the dollar amount that's uh, coming up on there right now. There was a couple of changes. Uh, Mr. Bartell and Mr. Nicholson did an, a marvelous job in uh, explaining what the differences are and why there were the increases mostly because of some projects that did not get completed or we have not been billed for a couple of major projects and then there's also uh, the unknown of of uh, what we're going to end up for a total on the fist passage uh, through the aqueduct i would also like to make notation and again i thank mr bartell for this on the lower left hand corner also talks about our revenues and the like so Again, uh, the goal of the Finance Committee this past year has been to provide dashboards and uh, visuals that any and all members of the board has an understanding of where we're at, uh, the detail to the line items and the like. Mr. Barthel has been very patient with us and very understanding and, and extremely competent in, in bringing that forward. That ends my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mary Darnis. Mr. Paulson, do you want to run us through this cash budget for one of the team? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll actually uh, call on Paul Barthel. Okay. Um, and and uh, since he has all the information in his brain, and I don't know how he does it, but uh, but he's amazing that way. So, um, Paul, would you mind taking over and just going over some of the highlights for the board? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, as uh, Mayor Dardis referred uh mentioned earlier uh this is the third uh and final uh budget that's being pre that was presented to the finance committee and now is uh, looking for approval from the full board uh the initial one was about 193 million uh that was a uh, year over year and and did a uh, a projection of what we were utilizing at that time uh the second one was for 213 million we saw an increase in that one and several uh, locations, especially some uh, MOUs, uh, some a lot of that had to do with utility work uh, that we were uh, anticipating um, in 2023, and then we uh, were able to finalize able to finalize those numbers uh, before our last uh, budget go round. And then uh, this one also with that third party MOUs, as uh, Mayor Dardis previously mentioned, we had a couple of projects along the channel that we thought were going to hit the books in 2022. Uh, they have been completed or very near completions. They're the SBC Tower uh, just west of West Fargo. I know that they're out there installing equipment on that tower. Uh, the last week or so and finalizing that. And then the other is the Magellan pipeline. That work has been completed. Uh, however, uh, we're just waiting for the invoice for that. And so we had to push those uh, into 2023. And then the other major area, as Mayor Dardis mentioned too, uh, we've had, uh, Peggy, if you could scroll up just a little bit uh, to the P3 um, and Payments to the developer, uh, we had 15 million identified and that's for uh, our BNSF payments uh, for the construction and, and maintenance agreements that we anticipate uh, will be in 2023. Originally, when we put the 2022 budget together, 
uh, from the RRVA schedule. Uh, they were shown in 2022. However, with a bit of the slow start and their coordination with uh, the direct coordination with the Burlington Northern uh, Railroad, uh, that's now showing in their latest schedule in 2023. So we, uh, the, that's not a, that 15 million is not a new expense. It's just an expense that we were looking to push from uh, 2022 to 2023. And then the other thing that we did uh, between October and December, uh, we've been working with the developer uh, as we closed. Uh, and hit financial close in the end of 2021. That set basically the baseline of what was there in their contract. At that time, we had not finalized several MOUs. Um, now that we have those utility MOUs finalized, there's some slight changes in the scopes. Uh, and so there's some uh, change requests uh, with the developer and we've been negotiating with them. Um, uh, the, one other change that uh, Mayor Dardis mentioned too is that at that time when we closed, uh, there there wasn't um, uh, as as clear or a definitive uh, uh, fish passage requirements. We've had some updates and been working with the core and uh, the and ultimately with the local agencies uh, as to the fish passage, especially on the Maple River. And so there's an additional cost that's going to come from that that we will see in 2027, or, I'm sorry, 2023. And so um, that's where that additional about $7 million has come from. We went back with the P3 development team and the P3 team and the contracting and uh, made sure that, that uh, anything that we think will hit the books in 2023 is not captured in the, the cash budget. So those are the ups, upsides of the uh, updates for the expenses. If uh, Peggy, you could go back down to the uh, revenues. Um, a couple things to note here. Uh, the main source of funding for this next year is going to be our legacy bonds uh, from the state of North Dakota. If you notice, there is no uh, state water commission funds in our uh, revenue sources this year. First time in a very long time. Um, and that is because we have um, basically spent all of those state water commissions funds and their matching funds. And so we'll be able to fully tap into the legacy uh, funds uh, from the North Dakota legislature. Also, we have uh, the Fargo sales tax and the Cass County sales tax. Um, those are a conservative uh, estimate based on past year's performance and how we move forward from there. Um, if you notice, uh, on, if you take a look through the finance committee packet and, and also through your board packet, there's a report by the fiscal agent, the city of Fargo. And within that, you can kind of see where we've been for the last few years of uh, tracking the, the sales tax. So we projected that forward and uh, uh, basically made a conservative estimate that way um, so that we make sure that we have enough sales tax to cover our cash budget. So that's basically the highlight that I have for you. Um, if there are any questions, I stand well, for those. Well done, anticipating the two points I wanted you to bring up regarding revenue. So good job. Uh, any uh, questions for our team regarding our cash budget. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir, Mayor. One of the things that we, we wanted to point out uh, that in, in a future meetings, probably at the end of the first quarter, we will have a yearly summary of where we're at with regard to sales tax revenues complete. Uh, the, uh, you know, those reports run two to three months behind. So we'll have the, an actual figure for uh, calendar year 2022. So the board will again be able to review that and uh, discern whether or not their comfort level with uh, covering uh, the cash budget as Mr. Barthel said. The other thing is, is that I'd also point out to you that uh, 2022, it was projected that our expenses would be at about $179 million. 
and year to date we're at about 90 million. So to the to Mr. Barthel's point, uh, some of these things with uh, uh, that weren't uh, invoiced in 2022, uh, we do not anticipate that we're going to have that type of cushions, if you will, in 2023 as the project continues to move on. Uh, there's going to be a lot of money going out. So, you know, again, this year, uh, year to date, we're at about $90 million in expenditures on a budget of $179 million. And uh, we do not anticipate that that's going to be the, the story when it comes to 2023. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Mr. Paulson, I'm presuming we need action from the board to approve, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, Bernie Jarvis here. I would move that we approve the 2023 budget. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a second, please? Twenty second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any discussion on this item? Any discussion? If not, done. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Jardis. Yes. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Mr. Pepcorn. Mr. Ebbinger. Aye. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Grenberg. Aye. Mr. Olson. Yes. Mr. Seltzerbold. Yes. That is everyone. Motion passes. Thank you. Anything further on finance, Mr. Paulson or team? I don't have anything else, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. On to item 10, other business. Anything for other business, Mr. Paulson? Nope, nothing. Okay, anything for other business from our team? Don't see any hands up. Nobody making a motion. So with that, our next meeting is January 26th. Hopefully in person, hopefully in City Hall. I sincerely appreciate everyone's flexibility today, and I think we all need to have a, a restful evening and then an aggressive shoveling day tomorrow. So God bless. Have a Merry Christmas. We don't see each other. We'll see you next time.